baby. Trying to climb up this high ass freeboard boat. <laughs> and I don't know how to do it other than to go under the line. <laughs> hey! Woohoo! That's how it's done, baby. Yeah, you got it. Here you go, ready for the beer? From GTFO Plan, we are currently in Southport, North Carolina, awaiting a weather window on a delivery on a Bali 4.5, a 45-foot catamaran that we are bringing from Key West, Florida to Annapolis, Maryland to build our sailing resume for when we get our future boat, the Balance 428. Yes, 482. 482. <laughs> Six feet. Who's yeah. counting? <laughs> we are. It's a 48, too. Right. It's yeah. a 48. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So as Anne said, we're on a Bally 4.5. Um, it's owned by Katana Group. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of, I guess, their leisure luxury line of their boats. Uh, it's definitely a, uh, a production boat designed yeah. for charter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one in particular, it's a 45-foot, about 24-foot beam, 4-foot draft. This one in particular has two 57 Yanmar horsepower engines. Uh, 800 liters of fuel diesel and mm -hmm. also uh, about 800 liters of water holding tanks. Uh, it also has, I think, an 11K generator on board. Yes. Uh, and we'll show you some of the other uh, amenities that it has. Uh, but a quick disclaimer is this, not, this boat, as we give you the tour, is not going to be in that pristine condition that not. you would see at a boat show. Yeah, right. Because, as Ann pointed out, we are doing a delivery. Uh, this boat has been in charter. Uh, so you're going to see a little bit of love and, or wear and tear well, on it, uh, but also dirt. a little bit of a mess because yeah. we've been living on it. Living on it, for, yeah. Again, this is a charter boat, so not the best looking dinghy, and we have it upright, which is actually the best, safest way to have it if you're doing a passage, which we are. Um, one downside of this big open layout, we've had some pretty rough weather on the sail, and there are no handholds anywhere. So once you come here, you have you, you got this, and then you kind of have to do this type of thing when you're underway to keep your balance. Um, again, if you're just chartering island hopping, that's a non-starter, but for rough weather, it was pretty tough. Coming around here, your engines are here, port and starboard, um, and they were very accessible. Oops. Let me get this. You can see your stepping plate here, and you can get to everything. And there's your fuel water separator, your seawater strainer, your starter battery and starter panel. And here you've also got your sail drive, yeah, your autopilot. And, and this has a sail drive configuration, and there's the transmission for that right down there. Pretty simple. Like I said earlier, uh, 57 horsepower Yanmars. That's your engine compartment. Comfortable sugar scoops when we were underway, even in rough seas. Um, we did not have any water coming over the sugar scoop, so that's a really positive sign in terms of her ability to not pull, take on water from behind. Again, this is a four cabin layout. There are hatches on the aft 
first you have a small hatch here. We've never really understood why it wouldn't face forward where you could pick up wind a little better. Um, and you could not fit down this hatch. They're very repeating, but we believe that's because of the size of this bulkhead here. And there's a small little opening hatch right here, small port. And then you'll see once we're in the inside, there is another small port along the side. We found the best way to get ventilation is actually to prop the head door open and open that hatch. And then you get a better draw of air when you're at anchor. So here is your swim ladder, which folds down to get on board. And here is your handheld shower that you can pull out, and it has hot and cold, so that's really nice. And that's going to be your primary place probably to rinse off when you're out. Moving forward. So it's a flybridge setup. Now these handhelds are good because when you're coming up, you got this to hold on to. You go from this. And then you can switch to this. So you always have one hand for the boat. Uh, but you're very, we're not fans of the flybridge. You're very removed from the action. And also you're really high up. So any kind of wave action is amplified the higher up you are. And it's really uncomfortable. But in flat seas, it's a great space. You only have engine controls up here, so you do have to come up and that wasn't so nice when we had some rainy weather because it's not very protected from the elements. Um, you got all your, your, what's this called? Chart plotter. Your chart, a large chart, chart plotter. Yeah. All your instruments. All your instruments, compass. And this is a really great space to lay out on. But again, not something you do in rough weather, but if you're mostly at anchor on this boat, you have plenty of places for your guests to lounge around. Now this boat comes with four 100 watt solar panels. Uh, in the big scheme of things, it's not a whole lot, uh, but it's enough to you know at least trickle fill those batteries back up uh, so that you have some power because the way this boat is configured, and you'll see in the salon, there are some big power sucks yeah. uh, with regards to what's on the boat. Now coming forward here, Okay, I'm just shy of six feet tall, and I can stand underneath the boom. I can't even reach my sail at all. There is absolutely no way to get to the sail. Um, that's a real downer in my book. Uh, they do have a couple of ladder steps that you could walk up, but again, you're not really going to want to that underway, you know, it's just not going to be very comfortable to climb up to get to your sail. So, not very handy of a setup. Yeah, and the same goes for the rest of the boom. It's a soft top bimini, which makes it even harder to get to anywhere along the boom. Uh, and then the same, you do have a little bit more ability towards the back. Like if you got to work on your topping lift or your reefing lines kind of fall out, um, it is a little bit easier to get to that. But again, we're tall, so that yeah. makes that easier. Well, in this mess of lines are your reefing lines, and no matter how well you secure them up in your stack pack, they fall out. So right now they're just rigged like this, so they're not slapping and chafing. Again, not the best design. I also am not a fan of two contact points on your traveler that come in the middle. I prefer the triangle shape because this shape allows for a lot of movement. So when you're in the winds, your boom is just doing this and that's not good for your rigging. But again, for charter and island hopping, gorgeous, gorgeous boat. You do have some semblance of ability to single hand from the flybridge position because the lines do all come up here. You have two um, winches up here. But what I think is a little bit odd is you do have another winch way over there. And then your roller furling line, though, 
comes to right here, and then when you want to take the jib in or out, you have to come up. You have to backtrack. Backtrack up to come the up winch. To here. So. Yeah. It's very awkward. A little bit awkward, but. Yeah, but again, how often are you making sail changes? Yeah. Um, it is a self-tacking jib though, so that's nice. Yeah. Uh, nice size cleats on the boat. Really nice and solid and sturdy. I would like to see that when manufacturers build those in. Now the party area. <laughs> yes, this is your front porch. Yeah. Now one of the weirdest things with this boat that really took me by surprise is the lack of a trampoline. I know. This is where you would normally have trampoline. Yeah. So this is all a hard deck. Um, and when we came up, we did a little bit of uh, pounding, beating into the wind. Oh, yeah. And there was a lot of flap. A lot of flap. Very loud. Um, That's hard but the there wasn't as much water that came up over yeah. that you would, ex you know, so I think that kind of blocks a lot of the water. Well, I think this lip also seemed to keep water from coming in. Now, normally you would have a small table here and a small table here, but since we're doing a passage on this boat, um, we took those down as one less thing to get in the way. Uh, again, now, this is a great spot to sit. I think if it were my boat, I would have some kind of awning, bullet anchor to put over here for shade to get out of the sun beating down on you. Um, now one feature I did really like is the front window. Yeah. That entire thing slides all the way this down. Yeah, so it's nice. You get a great, wonderful breeze coming through when you're into the at anchor or on a mooring. Um, now, obviously, you got to be mindful of bringing it up uh, while under sail, um, but you can crack it maybe an inch or two, and then you have that awning that comes over just enough right that you can have a nice little breeze still. And you don't get water. And you don't get water in. up in there. That was the really nice setup. So here's your anchor. Um, because we're under a passage, we have it lashed down. We don't want to lose our anchor. And there's your bridle. So, and it's a decent size anchor for this size boat. There's your electric winch with uh, the remote. So one of the things we did notice with the anchors is that we were with Sail Oceans, uh, met up with another couple that was on a bally, either 4.2 or 4.5, is that it's very under anchored. Uh, we had a nice blow come through, and the anchor that came stock with the boat, just they were dragging. And there wasn't a thing they could do. I mean, they tried several times to reset the anchor, but finally ended up just leaving and going finding a safe safe harbor elsewhere. Uh, so that's something to always consider. But I think a lot of boats do that. They under anchor their boats. So that's always good to have a nice heavy duty anchor because the bigger the better, right? That's what she said. So you got storage um, and both four peaks. And this is the four peak that also doubles as a cabin. <laughs> there we go. So this is what they consider a cabin. Um, and again, with the hatch opening this way, when you're at anchor, you're you're not catching the wind with it. Now you could just put it all the way down and then have some kind of scoop, but I'm not sure how you would attach it. We like it when the hatches face forward because then you naturally draw air down and you keep that ventilation going and reducing your amount of mold that you get, which is always a problem while you're on the water. All right, so this is your entryway, nice big sliding door. It has a really great uh, mechanism for securing it, which is very important when you're underway. So it gives a nice open feel. And then you enter the salon here. Again, this window works similar to the window that we showed you earlier up front. It has basically three settings, fully open. Well, actually this does come down. So it'd be fully open down. This part way, then it comes up to here. You know, so you have a little crack at the top and fully closed. It would be nice for both of the windows if there was a middle setting, if you wanted halfway. But again, you get great ventilation on this boat. It's really, really nice. Um, nice seating around. These are really flexible stools that you can use 
I found when we're underway, this is almost like the best place to sit because you're, you have a great view looking forward or sitting right here, you can see your instruments. You cannot control your engine from down below, so you would have to go up in the flybridge. But once you're out at sea, you typically are just making small adjustments as you see ships and you can do, you know, plus one, plus ten, minus one, minus ten to adjust your heading. So your salon, your kitchen, your galley, so your galley has great storage, um, really nice cabinetry in terms of, you know, everything that you can fit. You can easily live aboard on this boat with your appliances and what you need. Trash and recycling, double sink if that's your thing, uh, oven. And I like all the upper cabinet storage that you get on this boat because you don't have to bend down and get your stuff. And this little cubby here is very handy. This boat is rigged for 220, um, and most of the world is on 220. So you see the 220 type outlets here. If you had to plug in a coffee maker or a mixer or whatever creature comforts you have, and again, the fiddles are really nice because we could cook underway. It's not gimbaled, but you don't typically need a gimbaled stove top on a catamaran. It is a propane stove and oven. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there are lithium batteries. I think they're just the AGM gels. Yeah. Um, but a lot of folks are moving towards that direction of going lithium batteries and then right. in turn going induction stoves. So I'm sure that right. that's a feature that you can easily, easily get. Okay, great storage. And then you've got one, two, three, four drawers. And again, nice deep storage. So we like to see a lot of storage on the boat. But here is the thing that just blew us away. Check this out. This is bigger than what we have at home. <laughs> and it has an ice maker. Yeah, ice maker, <laughs> water, dispenser. Um, now the downside of this glorious fridge is when you are underway, your stuff shifts in here, so when it when you open the door up again, you never know what's going to be falling out at you. Yeah, you got to be like Fruit Ninja. But this is sweet. That's what keeps it from latching. But this is going to be a big power suck. But again, if you're looking for comfort, pretty damn nice. When you're coming in, when you're underway, these little lips here really help. And because this is secure, I tended to use this. But again, you kind of have to make a jump here and hold on to the table in rough seas. And um, even though these corners are, I don't know what you call that, they're not rounded, I definitely have a few bruises from being underway on this boat because you do have sharp corners in a lot of places. And when you're in rolly seas, that's when rounded corners would be very nice to have. Um, you were yeah. gonna go down? <laughs> so going down, uh, steps are pretty steep, but again, I liked how I had things to hold on the whole way down. Um, again, I'm talking about when you're underway and it's rolly. Uh, both sides are the same. This is the four cabin layout, four cabins, four heads. So we're just going to show you one side because the other side is going to be exactly alike. We'll start with the aft cabin. Uh, again, we are living on this boat, so we have our sleeping bag. It's been quite chilly. Uh, we showed the ventilation. You have a small hatch here, a little hatch there, and a little hatch here. We like the lights, and the storage is good. We didn't put our stuff in here, but you have four big, large cabinets for storage. And then here's your head, which is in suite. You have a shower with the shower door. A nice sink and a head. And it's an electric flush. Yes. And a deep cabinet here for lots of storage. And here are your four cabinets. A little bit of hanging space here and then shelves, which you can really do a lot with, um, but they're pretty shallow. 
So it might be tricky as a liveaboard, but for vacationing, fantastic space. All right, so coming from aft cabin, moving forward, uh, here are your steps. Here is your escape hatch, if you were to flip. Yeah, and the life raft on this is situated underneath the right. hull, so in the theory that the boat is upside down, yeah. you can get to your life raft. Exactly. A little bit of shelving. Uh, we have this up, the mattress is up to show you. I was wondering why the beds seem really comfortable for being a fairly thin foam, and this is why. It has this system underneath, and so not only does it add to airflow, but it adds to comfort, and what a difference it makes. I love this system under the mattresses. Uh, nothing else new that you haven't seen. There's again a small hatch there. there. That port is what leads to that little teeny bow peak cabin. And you got another little hatch here that we pointed up above. A little bit of storage on the sides. You can see if we move the mattresses. You know, you have a little bit of storage here and your little step up. And they're not in, but I do like the way all the little hatches have screens. If you're in a buggy anchorage, these would be really nice to set up to keep the bugs out. Okay, here is your in-suite head for the four cabin. Same setup, shower, sink, small window, head electric head and your medicine cabinet. With the four cabin, four head layout, you could easily have eight people aboard. Yeah. You could put a couple of children in the four peaks, one in each, but I don't know other than a very short adult who's not claustrophobic um, would want to sleep up there. Yeah. And again, the other two people that they count would be probably putting this lawn table down for another two people. Yeah. But again, I would say comfortably eight Comfortably people. eight. I would agree with that. Yeah. Because those four peaks I looked, it's pretty austere up there. I mean, yeah. it's just your fiberglass hull and then a, a yeah. mattress. It would be then, very stuffy Yeah, very stuffy. Night. All right, one thing that we've noticed, and you know, our current little boat is 30 some years old and we don't have it, and we don't do much in terms of maintenance. This boat is less than two years old, and I'm seeing some rust on the rigging, the standing rigging. You can see the rust here and down here. Now, I realize we're in a very salty environment, but I wouldn't think you would see some of this so early on, and I think that's the problem with a production boat. If you were gonna buy a production boat, any production boat for liveaboard, I've heard one of the first things you have to do is replace all your standing rigging. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. It's it's a great boat in terms of live aboard and being at anchor. It's definitely not a performance boat and it's definitely a charter boat. This is a Dream Yacht Charters boat that Captain Ben has been tasked with bringing up and we're his crew. Uh, but so live aboard, it's great. <laughs> Sailing, it doesn't have any fancy sails. It has a really small blade type jib and a main sail. Right. And we have had the wind on our nose pretty much the entire time. So right. we really have not sailed the boat. Right. So we haven't had a chance to test that portion of it, but just when you look at the numbers in terms of the charts that we've been using in our videos, you'll see that it's towards that lower end in terms of uh, yes. per performance. Yeah. But we know that, that's about yeah. it. Well, and it would help if we had, you know, like a real big downwind sail, you know, uh, either a Code Zero or a Jenniker or something. Or something. Yeah. Other sail choices. But on a charter boat, you don't typically have all those different sails, so we cannot share information in that regard. Yeah. And then this one in particular is the flybridge variation of the Bally 4.5. Uh, so personally for us, we're not fans of the flybridge. Um, but, you know, some people like that. And again, as Ann pointed out, if you want to kind of do some island hopping, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of life in the lap of luxury, this is, this is probably up your alley yeah. uh, with regards to doing that, being, being the host of, of lots of people on board. Uh, right. Yeah.